the Lord is good to be in God's house. Amen. We came to his house to praise his name, to lift up the name that's above every name. Amen. So listen, it doesn't really matter what you brought into this place. What matters is who you're taking out of this place with you. Amen. Amen. The spirit of the Lord is available. The power of the Holy Spirit is available to all those who will receive. Amen. Amen. And so we came here today. So I want to encourage you in that, that the Lord has drawn you here today and that you're a part of what God wants to do today because you matter to the kingdom purposes that God has in store for your life and for this church. How's that for a good morning and a hello? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, listen, I just wanted, just wanted to come up and give you a quick welcome. Uh, I wanted to also add that inside of your uh, bulletins this morning, you'll find these little cards. These are back to school bash invitation cards. On the back side is a full ministry menu of our services. Uh, I just noticed a typo. Uh, it says morning worship services. It has all four services on there. But right underneath, it says children's ministries at all three services. We do have children's ministries in all four services. Um, however, she also made an observation that 90% uh, of the population won't be able to read that anyway. Uh, so, but um, but in, in any case, I want to encourage you. We have about 100,000 of these. So uh, you can grab a handful, hand them out uh, wherever you go. Just invite people. And uh, let them know about our back to school bash that's coming up. It's going to be a wonderful time. It's a community event, it's free, and uh, we, with the purpose of it, is uh, is we try to get some exposure uh, to the to the uh, uh, to the public about our our midweek uh, launch and what's going on here at the church um, throughout for our for our children in particular uh, with the Royal Rangers and the girls ministry. So, um, but uh, so anyway, take 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 note of that, please. Now. We, we started a series last week called Keep the Change. And, uh, and boy, I will tell you, I have had so much response to last week's sermon. So many people that have been struggling with change and that God is, that God is challenging them through his word and through the life of Joshua and, and, how, and how instead of resenting the change or wishing the change away, just learning that, hey, listen, God has me exactly where he wants me for the season that he wants me in and that he is going that he's going to work out everything according to his will in my life. And so we're learning to keep the change. And so uh, I mentioned to you that um, that th that sermon was birthed uh, out of a message that Pastor J.C. was preaching to the students uh, on a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago now, as we were sending off a family that had, was experiencing some tremendous change in their life. And, uh, and so JC and I have gotten together and we made a three-part series out of that message and, uh, because I really felt like it was something that the whole church needed to hear. And so uh, for the second installment, uh, I've asked uh, Pastor JC to come and to share what the Lord really poured on his heart. So would you guys give Pastor JC a huge Cornerstone welcome as he comes to share the word today. Can we give it up for Pastor Chris? Come on. Come on. Guys, it is a pleasure to be here this morning. I'm excited to preach. Um, this message, like Pastor Chris said, was birthed out of a season where a lot of our students were going through change. They... Um, a family was leaving. They were moving. How many ever moved when you were younger? It's like, it's traumatic, right? Like, that's life, that's life changing. That's like, when you, when you move in high school, that's like the end of your world. And so uh, I, I felt like the Lord put a, a message uh, for change in my heart and how to deal with change, how to respond to change. And, uh, and not only that, but we're also in a season where uh, this past week was the graduation of many of our students, 12 students graduated from the Forge. So we're, we're, we're 12 students uh, that we sent off into, into the world. And um, I mean, do you guys remember graduating? That's a huge change, right? That's, that's a huge change from, from being a teenager to manhood and womanhood. And, and all of a sudden, you, you have responsibilities. You have the freedom to do what you think is, is best. And uh, that's, a, that's a dynamic and huge change. So uh, that's where that, that sermon came from. And uh, I really feel, like Pastor Chris said, that it's a message that is applicable to every single person that's here today. And so I want you to look at your neighbor, and I want you to tell them, keep the change. You don't have a neighbor, so I'll say it to you. Keep the change. All right, keep the change. Before we do that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. 
and uh, we'll get right into this sermon. Father, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you first and foremost for the privilege that we have to be standing here in this place, God. God, I thank you, God, for the privilege that we have to be able to listen to your word, to glean from your word, to learn from your word, God. God, I pray that you would, take, that you would help us not to take your word lightly, not to take the instructions that are found in your word lightly, Lord Father. God, I pray that today as we speak about change, I pray that you would be uh, free to change any part of us, God. I pray that you would be free to begin changing our mindsets, that you would begin to be free, Lord God, to change our paths, to change our direction. God, I pray that you would change our destination, God, if we're in the wrong path, Lord. God, I pray that today would be about opening ourselves up, God, for you to change things, God, that we can't change in ourselves, Lord. We need you this morning to come in this place. And so, Father, I just pray that you would fill this room with your presence, God. God, I pray that you would help us to put aside the things that happened this morning. God, I pray that you would help us to put aside the fact that some of the kids didn't get ready on time and we showed up late. God, I pray that you would help us to put uh, things to the side, the fact that perhaps we didn't get to have breakfast this morning. And I pray that you would help us to focus, God, on what you are trying to say. Help us to focus on what the Spirit is saying this morning. I pray in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said? Amen. Uh, everyone said? Amen. All right, come on. You guys are awake this morning. I am pumped. I just came back from a vacation. I came back from, uh, uh, we went to Florida and we went on a cruise. And we found out that we're just not cruise people. All right? <laughs> How many cruise people out there? How many love cruises? God bless you. You know what? The more for you because I just, that's just not my jam. That's just not, that's not, I, it's, it's like there's too many people in one place. It, like, it feels tight. It, the ship is moving all the time. And it's just, it's, you know what? It's just not for me. I'd rather be on land. I, that's what I learned this past week. So I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be back. On land, I'm glad to be back here in the house of God and to be with my family, uh, which is you guys. But the, uh, this idea of change started with, uh, with change. It started with the idea that I, and I hope that most of you here, uh, share this, uh, this, the same feelings that, that I have towards change. And, and that is, I just don't like carrying change. I live in a generation where I, I don't even carry cash. Like, I, I just carry my wallet, and I, I carry Apple Pay. I, I use Zelle to send people money. You know, I, I, I use the Cash app, or I have my, my, my debit card or my credit card, and I, that's all I need. My wallet is, like, super tiny. And, and I realized that I just, I hate, I hate when people give me change, you know? I, I, anyone else feel, uh, feel the same way? Like, you know what? You know what? Keep the change. I, I would rather you just keep it because I don't want to carry it. I don't want to have a pocket full of change. Uh, I don't, you know, the worst thing is when, when you have change in the car and then it gets, like, lost and then you have to, like, clean the car and, and, and you have to vacuum it and then you have all this change and you can't vacuum because there's change in the car. So you have to pick up all the change one by one. I would much rather have a bill. I would much rather uh, have, have my debit card or, or, or just, just use my phone. The reason being is because it's, it's more comfortable. It's easier. It doesn't weigh me down. It's not, it's, it's not, uh, it doesn't bring about any type of discomfort in my life. Carrying change can be difficult. Carrying change can be uncomfortable. Carrying change can sometimes feel like it's weighing you down. Am I right? And, and the Lord began to show me that this change is very similar, that the feeling that we have towards this kind of change is very similar to the, the kind of change that we have, the feelings that we have towards the kind of change that God brings about. And so uh, I, I'm going to share a quick story real quick about just how sometimes uh, change can, can, can hit you sideways and you can just not be ready for it. And, and then we're going to talk about four different mindsets that our minds typically run to when, when change happens that we, we weren't expecting or that we perhaps don't like. And I, I talked a little bit about this, this vacation that I went on. And I'm going to talk extensively because I have some feelings I just need to get out. All right? <laughs> but... The week before I went on vacation, I, I preached a sermon on change, and I didn't know how much God was going to uh, challenge me to really take those words to heart during my vacation. We, we, we started our vacation by missing our flight. All right? Had to pay. And I didn't, ex I didn't realize how expensive hotels were uh, near, the, near the, the airport. Uh, and I found out very quickly. And then we went, we went on a cruise, and uh, my wife got sick because the cruise, you're moving all the time, and we didn't know if we were going to get sick or not. And some people get sick on cruises. It's normal. So she, didn't, she, didn't, she just didn't feel well. And uh, I, didn't, I, I enjoyed the cruise. It was good, but it's just, um, like I said, I'm not a cruise person. I'd rather be on land. That's just, that's just where I, I like to live. 
And we came back, and we're like, all right, you know what? I, I feel good. I feel refreshed. The time, time away was, was long enough. I'm ready to go home. We had this graduation that we were preparing for. And uh, we get to the airport, and I think our flight was 6 o'clock in the morning or, like, 5 o'clock in the morning just because when you're trying to get cheap flights, that's the ones they give you, you know, like, 5 o'clock, when no one else wants. And so we're, we're at the airport at 4 o'clock in the morning because we're definitely not missing this flight. And uh, come on, somebody. And then and come to find out they canceled the flight. <laughs> I said, okay, I can handle this. I got this. Don't worry about it. Honey, we're going we're gonna to go. You know, they gave us some vouchers to, to, for a hotel room. I was like, an extra day, it's a blessing from the Lord. We'll just choose to look at it that way. The second day, we, we, we go back to the airport, and, you know, we're, 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 we're again, 5 o'clock in the morning. We're getting all the stuff. So we get there at 4 o'clock in the morning, which means we woke up at 3.30, all right? And we get to the airport, and the flight is canceled again. Oh. Second time. And I'm like, listen. I can't, I can't keep doing this. So I'm like, can you give me a flight for later tonight? And they're like, sure, we'll, we'll try to get you guys on a flight for that night. So we get there again that night, and the flight is canceled again. And so they say, you know what, there's nothing we can do for you. Uh, the next, there's no more flights flying out until the following day. And all the flights are booked up because every single flight has been canceled. And so everyone is trying to get back to uh, the, the northeast. And so everyone has kind of been taking these seats. There's one... There's one seat open on the 6 o'clock flight, and there's one seat open in the 7 o'clock flight. And, and so there's, there's no other option. We have to get back. There's graduation happening, and, and just can't miss graduation for these students. And so th it's frustrating. There's a sense of, like, like build up inside of me like you wouldn't believe. Like, I realized very quickly what canceled flights can do to, a certain, to an individual, you know? <laughs> I, I was like... I was like, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. I was like, they just went out the window. They just did. I was like, man, who am I? I was like, I'm turning into a person that I was like, I never wanted to be like. But you know what? I started realizing that the third night, the third night there, I started realizing, I was like, you know what? This kind of change is the kind of change that we're talking about. This kind of change is the exact change that we're talking about, the kind of change that you don't want, the kind of change that's disruptive, the kind of change that uh, uh, makes you feel uncomfortable, right, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't allow you to be where you want to be, the kind of change that you weren't expecting. And all of, a so all of a sudden, I found myself at home, I mean, not at home, I found myself in the hotel being frustrated and almost angry. And I was like, God, what's happening? Why, why is this happening? You know, and, and, and the whole, you know, the, I walked through the whole list. Woe is me. Why is this happening to me? It always happens to me. It's the third time it's happened to me. And, and I started realizing that God was trying to do something. And maybe, maybe it was the, the enemy. Maybe it was the devil. But you know what? God allowed it. And so my mind began thinking, why did God, why did God allow this to happen? Why did God allow this to happen? And for me, God began to do something during this vacation Right, that although perhaps was one of the most difficult vacations that I've ever had, and maybe it wasn't as restful as I wanted it to be, it sparked a fire inside of me that going on a cruise or, or perhaps just, just resting uh, wouldn't have done for me. If it, and, then I, and I started realizing that through this change, through this change of flights, through this cancellation, God began doing something in me, and my wife began to pray together. We were, we were just so frustrated, so we were like, we don't know what to do. We might kill somebody, so let's just start praying. <laughs> Let's, let's just, you know, poor flight attendants, let's lie. Let's, they, don't, they didn't do anything. So, yeah, right? And so I said, what, honey, let's, let's just start praying. And God began to, to, to well up inside of me a fire. It began to, to, to well up inside of me a desire to want to come back and make a bigger dent in the enemy's kingdom. Right? And, and I started thinking, I was like, man, God, you know, God, God uses the enemy like a pawn. The, the things that, that I thought were going to frustrate me, and they did for a season, for a moment, once I understood that God wanted to do something with it, 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 it lit me up inside. And I, 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 would, I would even say this. I would even go as far as to, to, to put this idea out there, that the enemy might have been more successful at getting me to stop praying if he would have just put me in first class. <laughs> because when we're comfortable... When we're comfortable, we stop seeking God. When, we, when we're changed, when the plans are changed, when things start happening that we don't understand, guess what? It gets us to our knees and we start saying, God, I, I don't understand the situation, but I understand that you don't change, and so I'm going to chase after you. And perhaps today, I'm talking to someone whose plans have been changed. Maybe there was a relationship in your life and you said, you know what, this is what I want. And God said, nope, I'm going to change this. 
And, and, and that, 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 that uh, relationship was canceled, and all of a sudden you're like frustrated, you're angry, perhaps you're, you're, you're mad at God. And I want to challenge you today to look at that change as, as, as from God. Maybe you're in this place, maybe you're like, man, I had the perfect job lined up, and things changed. Things didn't line up the way that I wanted them to. Change, change, change. It can be difficult. We all face it. We all go through it. One of the other things that I started thinking about when it comes to change is that when you're younger, the seasons of change are a lot more distinctive. Meaning that when you graduate from junior high, you know, hey, there's a big change that's about to happen. I'm about to go to, about to, go to uh, high school. From high school on to college, there's a, there's a change. There's, literally, we have a graduation. We have an event to, like, to let people know, hey, there's a big change happening. And as you get older, as you graduate from college, those big moment, uh, monumental seasons of change, they don't, they don't have uh, events attached to them. And so they're harder to pick up on. They're harder to notice in your life. My, one of my questions for you this morning is, when was the last time that we were really, really changed by God? Will we allow God to really do a deep change inside of us? That's what this, that's what this series is about. Letting God begin to change us and let's keep the change because oftentimes we want to change. Oftentimes we want, we want things to, 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 to be different. But we're not willing to accept the change that comes with it. It was one of my favorite quotes, and it, go, and it goes like this, that your new life is going to cost you your old life. Your new life is going to cost you your old life. And so um, uh, as I was praying this morning, I got up really early this morning, and I was praying, and, and I felt like, uh, uh, this, this line kept coming back to my mind, is like, and it says this, it said, you think that disruption is a distraction, but really it's just your development. You think that this disruption is a distraction, but really it's just for your development. Let's, uh, uh, the verse today is found in Joshua 1. So if you would turn with me, and please take your time so I could drink some water. It's found in Joshua 1. We're going to start in verse 2. We're going to read all the way to verse 6. And it says this. It reads this way. Moses, my servant, is dead. That's very blunt, very straightforward. God is not, his bedside manners are not there right now. I don't know why, but just, just not. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River. I want to read that, 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 that specific passage a little different. Now then, you and all these people get ready for change. <laughs> Did you catch that? They're, about, they're, they're crossing over. There's, there's a change. There's a shift. There's a transformation that's about to happen. And so he says, now you and all these people get ready for change. You're about to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, the Israelites. I will give you every place you set your foot. As I promised Moses, your territory will extend from the deserts to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean and sea in the east and the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Man. Talk about change. Talk about transition. Joshua is undergoing monumental, cataclysmic, enormous type of change. His leader is now dead, and now he has to assume that responsibility. He has to assume that position. Just like Pastor Chris talked last week, there is a, there is a shift that happened in Joshua's life. Before, before we talk about Joshua, I just want to quickly talk about the four places that our minds run to when change happens. And listen, I just experienced it last week, so it's fresh in my mind right now. But the four things is that the first one, the four perspective of change that our mind actually run to, the first one is that change, will, this, that this change will change everything. How many ever felt that way? Where, thank you for the one person that's being honest right now. <laughs> change will change everything. Something happens in your life, right? And all of a sudden, we feel like this is going to completely mess up every single thing, every single aspect of our life is going to change everything. And maybe we're being a little dramatic, but it's a real feeling. It's a real, th these are real thoughts that happen in our life. We, we, have, we have this idea that sometimes when God just changes one thing, that it's, it's going to completely mess everything else up. 
The second thing that, uh, the, a second mindset that we have is that the change is happening too fast. How many of you have ever been there? If you have kids, I know you're there. <laughs> right? Change is happening too fast. And oftentimes, it's not that the change is happening too fast. It's that we are adapting to the changes too slowly. Because we don't want to be outside of a comfort zone. We don't want to have to change. And so what we do is we try to drag our feet as much as possible because we don't want to change. And so sometimes we think that the change is happening too fast. But Ecclesiastes 3.1 says this, that there's a season for everything. There's a time for everything. There's a, there's, there's a season and there's a time, meaning that God has appointed a time for everything. Whether we like it or not, you can't, we can't speed up the seasons, uh, the physical seasons, and we can't speed up or slow down the seasons of our spiritual life. And so when change happens, it's not that it's happening too fast or too slowly. It's that we are not in sync with the change. Third thing is that the change is for the worst, and I'm guilty of that one. That, that's like, that's my go-to. I don't know if you, uh, you maybe you'll have a go-to at one of these four, but for me, that, that's, that's the one. When something doesn't go according to plan, for me, I start thinking, man, this is for the worst. This can't be good. Any, right? Like, something happens, you're like, this, this is not good. Automatically, we get our labeler out, and we're like, we're labeling it, we're psh, 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 this is not good. This is bad. <laughs> Automatically. Our mind just naturally runs there. The fourth one, and, and Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says that our ways are not his ways. That our thoughts are not his thoughts, but his ways are higher than our ways, right? And so what you think is good and bad is, in, in a sense, almost irrelevant to God because we're short-sighted. We see, we can only see this far when God is, is, is big-minded, when God sees the entire picture, when God sees the end and from the beginning, we can only see for, uh, as far as the next step. And so when we look at something, we're like, man, this is, this is definitely for the worst. God's like, nah, this is, this is for the better. You just can't see that far yet. The change, finally, uh, the fourth one is the change is not what I wanted. Come on. Since when is most change ever what we want? Right? Since when has changed what we want? <clears throat> but I have a question for you that I felt like the Lord, as I, was, as I was writing this one down, challenged me with. And he said this, since when is your will the dictator of what is good and what is best for you? Since when are you and is your will and your capacity to understand, right, the, uh, what, what, what sets apart what is good and what is bad for you? Since when are you the deciding factor of what is good in your life? I mean, there's a lot of times in my life where I wanted things, and if I would have gotten them, I wouldn't be here. I, th I actually, I probably should thank God more for the things that I prayed for and didn't get than the things that I actually got. Come on, you guys, I'm, this is, you guys aren't getting this. Sometimes the, the blessing is the fact that you are not getting what you want because we don't understand the full picture and what we want is sometimes more destructive for us than the things that we don't want. That's 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 how God operates because God is good and so even though you're asking for something that perhaps is destructive for you, God is going to say, "Nope, I'm going to make sure that you get what you need and what you want." I just saw you sitting back there so I'm like, "Make sure I have enough time." Uh, change, change. As, as, as one of, the, one of the, the difficulties with change is this, and if you're writing notes down, I would, I would challenge you to write this down, is that when, when, when change happens, it doesn't matter how grounded of an individual you are. You could, be, uh, uh, you could be one of the most famous preachers in the world. Okay, You could be Billy Graham. When change happens, right, it, 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 in our circumstances, it causes our eyes to look around at what's happening. When our circumstances begin changing, you can't help but try to, you, you can't help but, but, to, but notice and to try and look at the circumstances. And you get your eyes off of the things that you should be looking at. And I was thinking about this, and I was asking the Lord, I was like, God, I was like, I understand that you show me, but I want you to show me biblically where is this found. And, the, and, and, and God brought me to where the disciples are on the boat in Mark 8. And 
uh, Jesus is preaching on a boat, and he invites them on, 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 on the boat. Jesus invites them on the boat. And so they're halfway through the other, uh, they're, they're going through, so from one side to the other side, and Jesus is sleeping in the boat, and then there's a storm that comes. And as I was thinking about that, I was like, Jesus invited them into a storm. I'm like, Jesus invited them into a storm. And so Jesus is found sleeping because the storm gets so violent that the disciples have to come down, wake him up, and they said, don't you care? We're about to die. Don't you care about us? And Jesus wakes up. He's like, what? <laughs> what? You know why? Because for Jesus, nothing has changed. The circumstances don't bother him. But when circumstances change in our life, we, 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 our, our minds naturally gravitate to the things that are changing as opposed to stay on the things that do not change. Our minds naturally gravitate to the things that change because we should be thinking about the things that don't change. Who doesn't change? God doesn't change. What doesn't change? His word doesn't change. It will stay the same to forever and ever and ever. You can count on this. That's why when Jesus gets up, he's like, do you, why are you afraid? Why are you afraid of this storm? Have you no faith? Because you should be looking at the things that don't change instead of looking at the storm. Because circumstances will come and go. They will change. But God, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will never change. And neither will his word. Amen. Change. It's, it's, it can be difficult. It can be very difficult. One of the... Um, one of, the, one of the things that as I was, I was writing this sermon, I felt like the Lord put in my heart was, you know, I was like, why, why is change? Like, we're talking about change, you know, and, and we, it's true, we're going to face change, but why is, why is change important? Like, why, why go through change? Why, why does God bring us through change? Why, why must we uh, have, to, why do we have to go through the ringer of change? Why, why must everyone change? Have you, asked, have you ever asked yourself that? Why, why do things need to change? Why can't it just, just stay the same? Right? Why, can't, why can't it just be good and just stay good? And as I, was, as I was thinking about that, I was thinking about why transition is so important. It's the process or a period of change that takes you from one state to the next. It's the process of change that takes you from one level to the next level. It's the process of change that God uses to take you from one place to the next place. It's the process of change that God took Joshua to go from the desert, right, to the promised land. It's the process of change that gets you from one place to the next. And there's three things that you'll see in, 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 in Joshua 1. The first one is that uh, Joshua, is in, in, like I said, is in, in the midst of an enormous transition. He's in a new place. And I won't be able to talk about the other two, but he's, he's in a new position. How many have ever walked into a position of leadership and you're like, man, I don't have no idea what I'm doing. Come on. <laughs> How many of you have walked into a, a, parent, a parental position and you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. I need a book. You know, parents are for dummies. And the, fourth, the third thing that he walked into is new pressure. Because with new levels, with new, with new, uh, with new places that you go to, there's new pressures. There's a, there's a story about a kid that, um, that made me laugh and made me choke, and I'll share with you really quickly. But this is this kid. He, uh, he goes through kindergarten, and uh, he's super happy to leave kindergarten. And, uh, and then the next year rolls around, and they're, they're, they're grabbing bags, and he's super excited to go to first grade. And so he gets to first grade, and he's like, he's like just beaming. His face is just super excited. He gets to first grade, and uh, the parents drop him off, and then he comes back home, and he's crying. He's just like, like, just crying. And his parents are like, why, 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 are you so, why are you so upset? I thought you were excited for, the, you know, what happened? Did someone say something? You're like, what, what's going on? And he's like, I, I just, I, I, did, I did all the work already. And the parents are like, what? He's like, I went to kindergarten and I did all the work and now they have more work for me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the parents are like, well, that's how it works. You know, you, you go to kindergarten, you pass kindergarten, and then there's more work. And he's like, why? Why is there more work? He's like, I, I did kindergarten. I passed it. Like, I got good grades. I colored inside the lines. I went to recess. I took my naps. Like, I did it. 
And sometimes I feel like we're like that. You know, we, we walk through life and walk through periods of transition. And we're like, God, I, I've been through kindergarten. Leave me alone. I don't want to be tested again. Right? I, I'm done. Like, this, my, my, my education level can finish here. Like, how many ever felt that way in, the, in your spiritual walk, right? You're, you're, you're walking through your spiritual walk and you're like, God, no more tests. Like, I need, I need a, a summer vacation for a little bit. I need a rest. God, no, I, I don't want to further my education. I don't want a doctorate. All right? That's for the preachers. That's for the evangelists. That's not for me. I don't, I don't want to have my doctorate in spiritual leadership and spiritual uh, understanding of who you are. I'm good. It's challenging, but it's true. The truth is, is that God is constantly moving us from one level to the next level. And Joshua finds himself, Joshua finds himself in this place where it's, uh, it's a, he's about to go from uh, one place to the next place. And as I mentioned, he's going from, he's going from uh, a place of, uh, of, of just of the desert. He's going from a place where they've been wandering. But it's been good. Although there's, there's some difficulties that were tied in with it, it's been good because God has been feeding them from heaven. And so to a certain level, it's been, it's been easy. It's, it's, it's been first grade stuff. It's been, it's, it hasn't been as challenging because all you have to do is, 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 is survive. You know, it, and there's, some, there's, some, there's, some, uh, there's some challenges to eating the same thing every day, but all you have to do is survive. And all of a sudden, Joshua now, now that Moses is dead, is being asked to take them to a new place. And that's why I believe this morning that God is asking for, for us to take us to a new place. And the, and the truth is that most of us, if we're honest with ourselves, we say, God, I don't want to go. God, I, I, I'm okay where I'm at. Just, just keep feeding me. Like, just, let's, I, got, I like the deal that we have. I, I don't want to go. Like, we, we, in, in, the, in, the, in the desert, there's no giants. Like, I'm not going to have to fight an eight-foot monster, Okay. There's no difficulties. There's no adversity. Like, I'm, I'm good. Leave me in kindergarten, please. But Joshua's taking him to this new place and to the promised land. And one of the very first things that we see is that um, God's promise to Joshua is this, is that I will give you everywhere you place your foot. Everywhere that you tread, everywhere that you walk, you will walk with authority. And you will walk in such a way that I will give you the very ground that you stand on. And that to me... All of a sudden, there is an effort that is placed on Joshua that wasn't there before. To, to walk to the new place in your life, you have to walk with a certain level of authority. You have to walk with a certain level of understanding that the very ground that, God is, that you are walking on, God is going to give to you. There's a certain level of faith. There's a certain level of faith that is required to be able to do that. God is trying to bring us to the new level, and the new level requires more of us, period. And sometimes we don't necessarily like to hear that. We don't like to be challenged in that way. But if you want to grow, if you want to go to the next level, if you want to be, if you want to be better, uh, you have to take steps of faith. That's, that's, that is it. You have to start walking. There, there, is, there is new things, there is new ground that's, that, that needs to be taken. <clears throat> it will take action. It will take movement on our part. The second thing is that... Um, it, in order for God to give you the places that you walk on, you have to know where you're going. You know, uh, one, one, of my, uh, one of my wrestling coaches said this. He's like, um, better than going fast is, is going in the right direction. <laughs> it, does, it does you no good to walk in the wrong direction and go at it super fast. And in order for you to walk in the right direction, you have to know what your promise is. You have to know what the promise is. You see, for us right now, we're, we're in the middle of undergoing, and, and like uh, Billy was saying, we, he, he's been here since when we were at one service, and now we're having four services. And maybe, maybe a lot of us, uh, maybe, I don't know what the consensus is, but I know I'm excited. You know why? Because I'm excited about taking ground. I, I'm excited. I'm excited to make a dent in Oxford. I've said it before. I, I'm not here to take a part. I'm here for the takeover. I want all of Oxford. I want, I want this cornerstone church, this little church that people can look at and, like, the parking lot is, like, swarmed, right, when they drive by and it looks like it's Rich's Farms and people stop by because they're like, is this Rich's Farms or is it over there? Because we don't know because there's just so many cars everywhere. I want this little church to make a difference. Do you want?
want this church to make a difference. Come on. I, I want this church to start walking, and I want the same promises that were given to Joshua to be given to us and say, hey, wherever we start placing our feet, wherever we start going, wherever we start moving, the actions that we start taking, that will be our ground. That, that, that is my desire. And so when I look at the fourth service, when I look at, yes, more will be required of me. More will be required of us as, as, as a body. But there's a certain level of, man, you know what? That's just me having to go to the next level. When I, when I went on vacation and I was frustrated and, and I realized, you know what, with my level, with who I am right now, and it's difficult to have to, 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 be, to be completely and totally honest with yourself and say, I'm not good enough to, for, for this level. I have, to, I have to change in order to go to the next level. That's what I had to do. I had to realize, I had to look at myself inwardly and start realizing if I can't handle these three uh, planes being canceled. If this is enough to throw me over the edge, if this is enough to, to cancel all the fruits of the Spirit in my life, okay, if this is enough to get me upset with God, then I'm not where I need to be in order to get to the next level. I need to change. Look at your neighbor and say, keep the change. Keep the change. When I look at for service, if I'm not equipped to handle it, if I look at it and it, and, and it, it and it intimidates me as opposed to inspires me. I'm not, I'm not where I need to be. I need to change. I, I need to grow. And the way that I do that is I say, God, show me. Lead me where I need to walk. Where I need, maybe it's a new position. It's a new place. There's new pressures. But God, I want to be ready for it. You know why? Because God is trying to do something. With, in, in the Bible, God was trying to do something with the Israelites. He took them out of Egypt. They wandered in the desert for 40 years, but they were still slaves. And so God was trying to take slaves and then turn them into conquerors. You know how difficult that is. And the same thing that he was trying to do to the Israelites, he's still trying to do to us today. He's trying to change our mindsets from slaves and from being owned to being conquerors. And so everywhere I walk, I walk into five guys. And I'm like, one day every single person here is going to come to church. One day, I walk into the dollar store, and I'm like, one day, every single person here is going to, and you know, where, well, you know where I got that from? Pastor Grant. He walks into every single Dunkin', Dunkin' Donuts, and he's like, he's like, do you know Jesus? I'm like, man, it's going to take 35 minutes now. <laughs> <coughs> and it's worse if there's no one behind him, because it's like, he's just like, I got, I got all day. <laughs> it's true. There's two things I want to say, and then, and then we're, we're, we're done. And we're just going to let God change us. How about that? Amen? Um, uh, I was going to go somewhere, and I completely forgot. Change. And so uh, I was talking about Pastor Grant, and Pastor Grant just, oh, yes. So, and you know, you know, you know the Lord put in my heart, and, and this is, this is a, a hard, do, do you love me? Do you know I love you? Okay, I'm going to challenge you right now, okay? Sometimes, like, when I challenge my students, like, it hurts because it's a little push, okay? It's a little, it's a little push. But, um, like I said, I don't know the consensus about four service, and, and frankly, I'm more concerned about my consensus about the four service. And, and I, this is what I realized. When I started inviting, when I started inviting people to church and realizing they couldn't make it on Sunday morning, that's when I realized, man, we need a four service. And if we don't invite people then we don't know that there's a need for a fourth service. And so if we, as people, don't value the fourth service, it's most likely because we're not inviting people to church. If we don't realize the need for a fourth service, it's most likely because the people that either, one or two things, the people that we're inviting to church can come on Sunday mornings, and you're inviting a ton of people, right, and sharing the gospel. Or we're not inviting people, and we don't realize the need for people to get saved and for people to come to the knowledge of salvation of who Jesus Christ is because that is the greatest change. That, that, that change going from death to life is the greatest change that could ever happen in one's life. Now, to, uh, next week we're going to be talking about some different things about uh, just, uh, you know, Joshua, one of, the, one of the greatest commandments that's given to Joshua is fear not and don't be discouraged. Fear not and don't be discouraged. And I was, I was, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about, Lord, I was like, how is it that, that we can do that? It, it sounds arrogant to be a, to, 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 to say to people, I'm aiming to never be afraid. Doesn't it sound arrogant? 
doesn't it sound arrogant to say, like, I'm, I'm just, I refuse to be afraid? Like, even just saying it right now, I feel like it's, one, implausible, and two, it sounds too arrogant to even, to even say that that's my goal. But that's what, that's what God told Joshua. He says in verse, in verse 9, he says, have I not commanded you to, to not be afraid, to fear not, not to fear, and to not be discouraged, to be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with, with you wherever you go. And so I don't have, I don't have time to unwrap this, this, this truth. And I, and, I, and I wish I did. But how, 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 do, how does Joshua, how does Joshua keep himself from being unafraid and from being discouraged? Listen, I would even say that being unafraid is one thing. But being discouraged, man, that's a whole nother ball game. See, I, I can deal with the things that come from, from the outside. I can deal with the fear that comes from the outside. That's, that's, that's in, a, in a sense, that's easy. Discouragement, discouragement comes, comes from here. Right? Discouragement comes from carrying things and burdens that, that we weren't meant to carry. Discouragement, that, that's hard. And now you're not only telling me to do one or the other, you're telling me to do both. That's hard. There's a, there's, I, was, I was reading a book, and it's, it's a book on prayer, and it challenged me to the core, and it had exactly, it, it, it spoke exactly to what, this, to, to what this is about. How does one choose to not fear and not be discouraged? I'm going to invite you with me to just stand up real quick. I'm ending. This is, this is me, my conclusion. But Josh was commanded to do that, and in the Bible, we have to understand that when God speaks, it's, it's the word of God. There's, there is no more clear direction than the word of God. This, this for us is the word of God. This is God speaking. This is God speaking. And so you may have said, you may, you may have understood and, and read the Bible, but I want to try to bring a new revelation to you that, 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 that I understood this past week as I was away and my trips were canceled and I was in the middle of the sea as, as I was reading this book. And is that for us, when I say something, right, if I say, you can ask my wife, if I say, honey, I'm going to take the trash out, okay, it doesn't mean that I've already taken the trash out. I still have to go and take the trash out, all right, and if I don't do it, there's certain repercussions, <laughs> right? When I say something, it is not the equivalent of me doing it. There's a difference between when I say something and when I do it. There's a, there's a distinction between me saying something, speaking something, uh, and, and then me putting action to it. I, as a human being, I still have to go and carry out what I said I would do. God's not like that. There's no distinction between God's speech and God's action in the Bible. You see that in Genesis. You, and, I, and I'm praying that you, that you understand this because if you can understand this part, then everything else that comes after it becomes easy. Because you can take God at his word. In Genesis, God says this. He says, let there be light. And there was light. You don't see God say, let there be light. And then he hurries over and he makes light. He speaks it and it's done. He speaks it and it's done. He speaks it and it's done. So when you look at God's word, why does God get so frustrated when, when, when we don't take him at his word? Why does God get so upset and say things like, why are you afraid? Do you not have faith? His word does not change. Not only does it not change, it will go forth and accomplish what it's set out to do. If God's given you a promise and told you, I will take you to a new place, he's going to do it, period. Come on. If God said, I will do it, he is going to do it. That's all you need to know. There is no distinction. There is no distinction. If God said, I have someone for you, guess what? He has someone for you. If God said, I will take care of your children, guess what? He's going to do it. If God has promised you healing, he is going to heal you. If God has given you a word, that's all that you need. Hang on to his word. God has given us a word, Cornerstone Church. He says, keep the change. Keep the change because that's how we're going to go to the next level. Do not be afraid. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Can you put the scripture back up, please? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. I don't know if you're in a place of discouragement today. Maybe you're in a place right now. And with every head and every eye closed, 
every head bowed. Maybe you're in a place of discouragement right now and you need God. Listen, I want to challenge you that what you need is not, is not a person to come alongside of you. What you need is not, is not for the change to go your way. What you need is a clear revelation of God's word, of God's promise in your life. Because when he speaks it, that's all that is needed. Action is taking place already. Perhaps not in your time place. Perhaps not here and now. But it's already done. If you're discouraged in this place, maybe, maybe your circumstances have overwhelmed you. Maybe there's a lot of pressure at work. Maybe there's a lot of pressure to be a, a, a good parent. I don't, I don't know. Maybe there's a lot of financial pressure. I want to challenge you to keep the change. And, the, and how, you, how you make sure that you're not afraid or discouraged is that you just make sure that you hold on to God's promise. You hold on to God's word. Father, I thank you, Jesus, today. God, I thank you, God, that all that we need, God, is your word, God. Jesus even said, God, I don't live by bread alone, but I live by every single word that flows out of the Father's mouth. And so, God, I thank you, Jesus. God, I pray that you would help us to be a people that live according to your word, God that live according to your promises, Father. And so, God, I pray, God, for every single person that's here today, God, I, I declare, God, against fear. God, I declare a warring spirit against anxiety. I declare, God, a warring spirit against discouragement. God, wherever they may be, Father, I pray that they would be encouraged this morning. God, I pray that your spirit would come upon them, God. God, I pray that you would give them a fresh word, God, of your, uh, from your promise, God. I pray that you would remind them, God, what you have said, Lord Father. And I pray, God, that they would not uncover cover, God, but they've buried in faith, Father, because of doubt. Jesus, I pray that today we would leave this place changed, God, and transformed by your word. God, I pray that you would help us, God. God, I know it's difficult. I know it's challenging, Lord, but I pray that you would give us fresh perspective, God, and I pray that you would help us to keep the change, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. See, what a powerful and challenging word that was, amen? That was anointed by the Holy Spirit. I hope you sense that today. God is trying to say something very clear to this church, and, uh, and it's up to us to be willing to receive and to let, let that cultivate in your heart. I pray, my prayer is that you heard very clearly today, not just for, for the church at large, but for you as an individual, for your family God is taking you to a new level. He's taking you to a new level. His promises are yes and amen, church. All you need is his word. Hang on to it. Keep that change. Thank you so much, JC. Thank you for being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Thank you for coming today. <coughs> Excuse me. God bless you. Have an amazing, amazing week. We'll see you next week. God bless you.